what kinds of things should teachers be doing to prepare as they're, um, you know, preparing to go back to school as far as like safety and things like that? Sure. Well, first off, let me say uh, PSEA has been focused like a laser on making sure that school reopening plans uh, keep everyone safe and healthy, students, educators, and their families. That's something we've been focused on every single day. Uh, going back to May, when, when, when school was, last school year was finishing up, we were already uh, in conversations with school district leaders and school boards associations uh, about how we uh, can make sure that these reopening plans address all of the needs that schools will have. One point that, that we make again and again is, is really this, uh, every school reopening plan uh, must be informed by good data and science. We need to be following what the experts and the doctors are telling us to do. And so PSEA has teamed up with other education organizations to form a school reopening task force where we looked at all of the research that's out there on COVID-19, all of the public health guidelines from federal and state sources. And we synthesized all of that and put it together into a report that serves as a roadmap for school districts as they develop reopening plans. And all along, our, our focus is, is, is always on the health and safety of uh, educators and students. So to your question, though, about teachers, uh, we've been uh, communicating with our members very regularly. We've been encouraging our local leaders in uh, various school districts to engage with school administrators about these reopening plans and make sure that the voices of educators are heard and included. Uh, educators spend a tremendous amount of time with students in classrooms and, and throughout the school day. So they have a good sense of what a school day looks like and they have a lot to offer in terms of issues we need to be thinking about uh, to keep everyone safe. We need to make sure that there's good policies in place for social distancing so that classrooms are not overcrowded, that students are able to stay at least six feet apart. Uh, we need to have good policies related to mask wearing and, and, uh, and, and not just for staff, but also for students and, and when it's appropriate in common spaces. Um, and, and, and on a broader level, we need to be thinking about measures to uh, regularly clean and sanitize buildings and buses more frequently. Uh, different procedures for meal preparation areas and cafeterias. Uh, one of the things about a cafeteria is cafeterias are not designed for social distance, <laughs> as you probably remember. Uh, they are really, uh, you know, often students are packed in. So we need to get creative and think about uh, maybe using gymnasiums or lobbies or other open spaces so that students can spread out or serve lunches in classrooms where students are able to keep space. I know some districts may be offering like online uh, courses for people that may feel safer uh, taking that route with their students. So what are your feelings on um, online learning and teaching during this time? We're very supportive of uh, school districts expanding their online offerings and, and of course it's, it's incredibly important as we as we saw earlier this year to be ready uh, to uh, to provide online instruction should, uh, should um, infection rates increase and schools do have to close again, it's incredibly important to have that, uh, that ready to go from day one. What happened back in March is that uh, many school districts um, um, had to uh, spend some time getting systems put in place and educators had a transition and students had a transition. And, and all in all, they did, they did a wonderful job. Uh, but now that we have time to plan, I think it's really important that uh, making sure that there are provisions for online instruction, uh, whether that would be available to some segment of the student population or, or, or to everyone, that that's really important conversation to have. But one other thing I could add about that is uh, the Pennsylvania Department of Education has recommended that school districts include flexible attendance policies in their reopening plans for both staff and for students who may have uh, health concerns. So that might mean for students having that online instruction available uh, because maybe that student is immunocompromised or that student has some sort of pre-existing health condition. Uh, so again, you know, if our goal is to reopen in a very safe way, we need to be thinking about those very vulnerable students and very vulnerable educators and staff as well and making sure that we're uh, addressing that needs as well because that's very important. 
I'm going along the lines of education as far as online or even in person. What are, do you guys have any concerns on the quality of education this year? Oh, I, well, we, we think um, that our educators uh, transition to online learning uh, in, in, in tremendous fashion. We were, we were very impressed with how they very quickly adapted to using various online tools, some of which they had never used before. Uh, so we believe that students uh, came out of this in, in the best position that they possibly could. There's obviously good research that tells us that uh, students would uh, be, students uh, benefit from being in the classroom. They benefit from being with uh, teachers and with their peers. And so we certainly, our top goal and, and the goal of many in Pennsylvania is to see school buildings reopen and, and students back in the classroom. At the same time, we got to balance that against uh, questions of safety and health and making sure that we have good procedures in place and that we're paying attention to what's happening in the community. Uh, that is one reason why uh, school reopening plans are being drafted at the district level, not at the state level, because every community is different and they may have different needs. And so school districts should really be looking at that, possibly consulting with local health officials uh, as well as state health officials and making sure that they're addressing the specific needs of their district. Okay, I think that's everything I had and you answered the rest of my questions I was going to ask. So is there uh, anything else that you wanted to add? Uh, I, I would just add one thing. Uh, reopening our schools safely is really dependent on having the resources and the staff in place to be able to manage this new normal and implement these new safety procedures. Uh, and one of the concerns we have is that so many school districts are facing revenue shortfalls as a result of the economic impacts of COVID-19. Uh, so it's really important, and we've been advocating for Congress to step in and provide emergency federal funding to our schools nationwide, uh, because this is a problem across the country. And we need to make sure that we are providing those funds so that we can maintain staffing levels. We need all the teachers uh, that we have right now so that we don't have overcrowded classrooms. We need to have school nurses to be able to manage student health. We need our paraprofessionals and support staff uh, to meet the needs of students. Uh, they're, they're all important and that, that, that means resources. So we're really looking to Congress to do the right thing. We spent a lot of time talking about um, you know, safety procedures, which are obviously incredibly important. Uh, the other consideration though is that uh, some students may be experiencing post-traumatic stress from the whole experience of this pandemic. Uh, they could be experiencing stress in their families uh, as a result of economic stress. Maybe a parent has lost a job or been, been laid off. Uh, they could be experiencing stress as a result of a, a family member or a close friend being sick uh, with COVID-19. So when students do return to school, it's gonna be so important to have, you know, not only teachers, teachers are incredibly important, but so too are counselors and psychologists and and social workers, school social workers, to be able to uh, work with those students and, and help address their, their mental health needs because they, they may have very serious um, uh, stress coming back in.